What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Sean Robert Johnson. As you know, I'm incarcerated at New Jersey State Prison in Trent, New Jersey. I appreciate y'all tuning in to today's episode that we got for y'all, so let's just get straight to it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Audio with Sean Robert Johnson. You know that's me, your host. And as you know, I'm incarcerated at New Jersey State Prison in Trent, New Jersey, and have been for the last 17 years. And don't forget to become a subscriber for free on both of our YouTube channels, at Prison Audio and at Sean Robert Johnson, as well as follow us on Instagram, at Prison Audio, and at Sean John 1222, that's S-H-A-W-J-O-H-N-1222. So today for this interview, for this episode, we have an interview with Chevelle, who was on Love at the Lockup. So, Chevelle, let's let you introduce yourself to people and just give people context of not, not just who you are, but, you know, how you found out about Love at the Lockup, that kind of stuff. Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Chevelle from Love at the Lockup, Life at the Lockup. Um, Instagram, respectfully, Chevelle. How I found out about life at the lockup, actually, well, love at the lockup. Um, a friend pretty much was gonna do it before me, and she basically did not want to do it, and so basically she gave them my information and told them about me, and so from there they uh, hit me up. And at first, me and Quaylen at the time, um, we was not, we wasn't really amp about it or whatever. We was like, I was like, I just asked him, like, you want to do this? Like, have you heard of a show? Because we wasn't watching the show at the time. So pretty much from there, uh, they pretty much said that they first they uh, came back and said they didn't want they didn't want us. And I was like, okay, I don't I didn't care because I wasn't you know interested in the first place. But then they came back and they was like, yeah. you know what? Like four months later. Uh, they came back and they were just like, you know what, we want you guys and everything. And then since then, we've been on since season three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely dope. Like, I watched all the seasons, so I definitely watch uh, the season with you and Quinn and yeah. there. So one of the questions uh, uh, I want to know is okay. what people don't get to see or hear about, which is behind the scenes. Like, what emotional toll do it take on you when you dating somebody that's in prison? Oh, wow. It takes a lot because it's like you're in jail with them. You're pretty much uh, yeah. going through the emotions. Um, Quaylen was at the time, he was in the hole a couple times, and there was times where I just had to write him. So we would just write all the time. And then when I was able to see him, you know, I was able to see him. So it's like an attachment because if they're locked up, it's like you feel yeah. locked up. You, you pretty much want to be especially me I'm a real one so I wanted to be there every step of the way like mm -hmm. if I if I could get a visit I'm gonna go out there he was three hours away so every every week I would drive three hours to go see him and so pretty much no, it I, was just go ahead. huh yeah and so pretty much um, no, go ahead, emotional. Go ahead, go ahead. it's emotional it's draining it's uh you know those twenty dollars twenty five fifty all that stuff adds up to a lot of money <laughs> you know pretty much you know yeah, putting yeah. on their books uh sending in cash app all type of stuff and everything so it's like a um so basically all that all that saying is when like a bad breakup happens with that it's like damn like I wasted my time, and then on top of that, you know, you can't get uh -huh. back what you did, but at the same time, if you did it out of love, it really don't matter. you just going to have to keep rocking with it. Exactly. Exactly. And being that I'll actually watch the show, I definitely can commend you for that because you definitely made it known, like, anybody that had anything to say, like, yo, I'm the one that's going to see this man all the time. Y'all not. Right. You can't sit here <laughs> and tell me anything. For real. Yeah. And people don't understand that because – being that I'm in prison, I mm -hmm. understand it from this side as well. So, like, I get what you're saying. And then, like you said, when the breakup happened, it definitely is. And you know you got one of the most famous quotes all of at the lockup <laughs> when y'all had that breakup. When you're walking oh, down Lord. the street, you got, one of the, <laughs> you got one of the most famous quotes ever. You said, if you dating somebody locked up, leave them. Leave that was your quote. You know, everybody was talking about that. <laughs> You know what? I should have taken yeah. my own advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm the saying. Only of, yeah, the only thing different about that is, you know, when you, you know, you. I said that, and I meant that when I said it. But when you, you when you're in a yeah. relationship, a serious relationship, and you really, because the thing about it is, um, 
me and Quaylen had not a sexual, you know, we had like communication. Like we didn't have sex for two. We I was with them incarcerated for two and a half years. So pretty much we we yeah. we built on trust and pretty much communication at the time. So it was just nothing exactly. but communicating exactly. and pretty much going to see him. So pretty much it wasn't nothing about no sex or nothing because I didn't I wasn't craving it, you yeah. know. The fact of that, but exactly. At the, but it all plays it all plays this thing because it's you know it's a attachment as well too, right? Where basically you know you're attached mm-hmm. to that person because you know it's it's nothing but going to see them, spending time with them, all the phone calls that stuff adds up to. <laughs> so it's just exactly. it's, it's all that was saying like um, it's an emotional roller coaster that you know some people have to go through. And get through, you know, with their loved one being incarcerated and them not able to, you know, physically really be in their presence. Yeah, facts. Now, I agree with that. Uh, so, the next question I'm thinking I want to ask you is if somebody was to date somebody that's in prison, or if they might currently be dating somebody in prison, they might be listening to this, what would you give them as far as the advice of the do's and the don'ts in that relationship? Mm, that's a good one. I would just say this from my experience. I would just say, you know, don't be serious right now with someone that's incarcerated. I mean, I understand that, you know, what people got to understand is this was my first rodeo. So basically, I've never dated a man incarcerated. So it was very interesting in me. So I would never knock anybody down for talking to somebody in jail. The do's is pretty much take your time. Don't rush it. Don't rush no marriage. Don't you know? Just it's it's. I would just say do it just like regular dating and take it one day at a time. Because when you pretty much dive in there, that's when you get messed up. And you know sometimes you can they can have skeletons that they don't even mention about, mention to you. Although they mention everything else to you, but they don't mention their skeletons to you, right? So my thing is yeah. you have to be patient. You have to also you know I would just honestly me personally. I would not recommend anybody talking to anybody in jail because if you at first just be their friend because you want you want your man to be your best friend. Let me just put that out there. Wow. And if they willing to willing to rock with you like that, then that's the one. You get what I'm saying? If they willing to be your friend until they come home mm-hmm. because it's pretty much it's it's kind of it's it's emotion it's emotional it's emotional roller coaster with that. And the I would say yeah. the don'ts is I mean. Well, yeah, I said the don'ts, but the do's. I mean, with the don'ts and the do's, it's just I don't want to say don't, and I don't want to say do because then I would be, you know, yeah. like okay, Savelle, you did, you did it, so why I can't do it? I'm not telling you not to do it. I just want people to be very careful. I want you not to ignore the exactly. red flags. I want you to pretty much understand who you are dealing with. I want you to do your homework. I want you to do your research. I want you to know exactly what you're getting yourself into, if you can even handle it. Is it is it something that is that you want to spend a long time and then invest in? Because that's it's time and it's money. And you know, I'm not saying that, you know, that's a bad thing, whatever, but you just need to have a friendship. So I would recommend people to wait until that person gets out. But I understand that everybody needs somebody incarcerated. You get what I'm saying? Because family ain't always there like they should yeah. be, right? So I understand that that woman is that backbone. That woman is that person to be there, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, financial, and all that. But at the same time, you know, what do what do that man do for you? You have sixty seconds remaining. And so, and so, yeah. and so, my thing is, and I'm gonna keep talking until you, you know, reach back. Um, and so, my thing is, you know, you don't want to uh, put all your eggs in one basket when you're pretty much talking yeah. to somebody incarcerated. So I would just, yeah, you know, no, I, I, I definitely agree with you. I try to tell people like even when we do regular episodes, just talking about prison relationships, it's yeah. rare that you can find two. You have 30 seconds remaining. The person that's in prison that's genuine, the person that's in the street, because it goes both ways, right? It goes both ways. You can meet somebody in prison that's nutty. You can meet somebody on the streets that's nutty if you're in prison. It definitely goes both ways. I, I've seen it from experience of being in prison. So exactly. I definitely get what you're saying. I definitely get what you're saying about that. So, all right, yeah, I'm, I'll call back real quick. Hold on. Okay.
but like I was but like I was saying, um, I just want my ladies to uh to understand, know your worth, know your value. Um, and I'm not saying you don't know your worth and your value because you're talking to somebody in in prison because there's a lot of men that's in prison. It's it's some that's that's probably is that one percent. You get what I'm saying? So don't 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 look at my life and say, oh well, you know, Chabelle did this and all that. No, just judge it, be in your own lane and do what you want to do. But at the end of the day, always, you know, just that intuition. If you get an intuition or that small voice in your head telling you not to do something, understand, believe it. Because that that little voice is pretty much going to tell you, okay, you know what? Let me just chill and everything like that. But I don't knock anybody from doing anything because love is love. And if you love somebody incarcerated, you know, hey, that's for you. What's for you is for you. And what's for me is for me. You know, I'm not going to say not do it, but then I'm going to tell you what to look for when you're doing it because it's not for the weak. Dating a man in jail, it's not for the weak. You have to be, you have to have a strong mindset because you got to understand that they coming out of jail, especially they've been locked up like Quaylen was. Um, you're dealing with somebody that's been locked up for 12 years. But at the same time, you got to understand that they, they dealing with life all over again, mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, you know, financially. You know, I taught Quaylen how to drive. I told him how to go fill out an application, go to a job interview. Like all of those things is full of facts. So honestly, when I very first did it, I went head full in. I'm like, I didn't think about all those things. And so I actually got to meet Quaylen face to face, like actually physically touch, you know, and it was like, dang, you know, he's really, you know, he's institutionalized. You get what I'm saying? And so I'm like, okay, there's other aspects that you got to pretty much, you know, mold yourself into with dealing with somebody you know you got to really be there every step of the way not half of the way you get what i'm saying so that's why i be getting kind of irritated when men be cheating on these women and they didn't they didn't pretty much sacrifice so much for for their love then probably got into with a family member of them or probably got into with their mother probably just uh you know just went to war for the man and they come out and they and they do just the incredible, just the, it's like a smack in the face. It's like a really good punch. Like, damn, like, you know, why me? What did I do to deserve all this? And then some women, they dealing with a man can make you lose yourself that's incarcerated because it's like, damn, am I even worthy? Am I even doing this? You know, what did I do for this person to do this to me? You know what I'm saying? So... You just got, I just want people to be patient and trust the process. You've got to trust the process because if you don't trust the process, then you're going to end up pretty much in a bad situation. And don't be like me <laughs> when basically, you know, it, my, my life was public. My story was public. Me and Quaylen, you know, we got off the show for a little bit to have a private relationship, but you know, being on TV is very public. Everybody is in your business and they only show a two minute clip of your business. So everybody feel like they know your business. So you just have to be patient. And if you're not on TV and you're dating a man incarcerated, keep it private. When it's really serious and you, y'all really out there, y'all married, because, you know, and some of them can be married and still do you wrong. But just understand, it's easy to say you're going to leave it's easy to, how can I put this? It's about action. If you say you're going to leave some, leave, leave somebody, leave them. But it's easy said than actually really doing it. Yeah, yeah, no, we good, though. So I'm like, yeah, the relationships of uh, uh, being somebody in prison, that, that's definitely completely different. Last time I would tell about a guy, he, he next door. He's like, yo, tell Chevelle, I'm going to say it. Tell her I say I love her. He quickly did it wrong. <laughs> no, uh, who said, said that? Somebody <laughs> in the background? Yeah, look, look, you don't hear what you talking right there. You like, you like, tell him all that. Tell, tell me Hold what you're hey, 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 Wong. Hey, Wong. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Wong. Tell hey, what you say. You say what you say. What you say? Let me hear you. Hello? Let me hear you louder. Let me hear you say it louder. What you say? 
I'm saying I, I'm saying I'm your biggest fan and I'm in love with you. I just ain't like how you was being treated and how you was acting crazy yeah. like over over and that wasn't deserving of yeah. you. Feel me? Okay, I appreciate that. Like, I really do. Turn up, if you're like that, I would definitely. Hey, yo, if you get a chance, I want to be your friend. Turn up. <laughs> We are our friends. I'm dead ass. You really fired me. I want to. I want to I I tell you about yourself, but I gotta give him this phone back. That's fine. We'll talk I to you later. You. Hopefully, I, I, I appreciate you. Uh, Thank you. Uh huh. I appreciate you. Okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah, oh my God. They, I didn't know I, I was loved like that. <laughs> oh no. A lot, a lot, a lot of people mess with you in here. A lot of people mess yeah, with you in here. Yeah, I hear that from so, different states and everything. Yeah. So I appreciate the love. I'm genu genuinely from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. I'm very humble, so I appreciate yeah, all of that. I do. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know what? Right, and I so, appreciate you doing this interview. What? Like I think that you are so dope of making a power move. Being, you know, doing all this and do being out here to be able to share your experience and still striving and still pretty much empowering you because you know what black men don't have a voice sometimes so pretty much you're making a voice and you're and you're trying to change something so you know pat on the back you know what i'm saying and god bless you yeah i definitely appreciate it, you know bless you back but i definitely appreciate it and when when my bro mike started this and we linked up and started doing it it's taking a life on its own now because like even it's not even just about me just to be able to give other people platforms even outside of me. So, like, that's the dopest thing about doing this. And I just think it's dope to be able to interview people while I'm in the joint. So I think that's, like, one of, one of the dopest things right there. So we try to definitely turn into something as we go along. So I definitely appreciate you for taking the time out to do it. So, all right, so before I have to wrap up and give these people this phone in here in a little bit, okay. what are your okay. final thoughts you saw on – uh? prison relationships anything on your final thoughts and you know put out all your social media handles at the end of it okay so um my final thoughts of pretty much uh dating a person incarcerated uh just uh take your time and trust the process uh take it day by day but just pretty much if you're young if you're dating somebody in jail just pretty much don't take it so serious i want you to go out and be you know, stay your age. <laughs> and when I say stay your age, just pretty much be outside, be outside and be respectfully and do you until that person comes home. But I can't stop anybody from dating nobody, but at the same time, just pretty much don't ignore the red flags. If there's red flags yeah. in it, trust the process of it. And that goes for men that's incarcerated too, because some of these girls out here be playing games and you be trying to be serious with them. And then they pretty much out here doing you dirty. And and pretty much you get out and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. I didn't even know this. I didn't even know. what. Wait a minute. So, you know, know your red flag yeah. as well, too, as a man. So I, I want to speak for the men and the women. But um, as far as that, um, you know, I'm not going to tell nobody what to do. But at the same time, choose your peace and choose your happiness. And whatever makes you happy, do it. But just pretty much just do it. Just do it easy you know don't go head in but um check out my instagram respectfully chevelle my facebook uh my fan page uh my facebook and my fan page chevelle more um also um i got a couple i got a book that's about to come out called still standing uh also pretty much uh been out doing like um i got also i got a myla got a hair collection myla hair collection uh i got a waist trainer okay. line out uh, www.boss uh, up chicks so basically all that is in my Instagram so you can check my bio as well too um, and honestly ladies and, and man y'all just trust the process you know I can't stop for who you love but you know just pretty much take your time and I pray nothing but happiness and anything that you want go after it, go after it. if you dreaming keep dreaming because dreams do come true Absolutely. Definitely, definitely heard. Definitely was powerful. Definitely appreciate it having you all here and just being oh, able to yes. give people insight. And, and I forgot, right, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you guys I got a couple movies coming out on Tubi. Uh, they're about to drop, uh, one about to drop next month, and then we're, I'm actually still filming for another one. So just be on the lookout and check okay. my Instagram, respectfully, Chevelle. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, definitely always want to plug people in and share their legacy, promote them on top of everything else. So, like I said, it was definitely powerful with the insight and perspective that you give. So, definitely appreciate it for you coming up here. So, for anybody that got any questions or comments, as you know, just call up 1-800-366-0911. That's 1-800-366-0911. Or send an email to stories at prisonaudio.com. That's S-T-O-R-I-E-S, the at sign, P-R-I-S-O-N-A-U-D-I-O.com. And don't forget to become a subscriber for free on both our YouTube channels, at Prison Audio, also at Sean Robert Johnson, as well as follow us on Instagram, at Prison Audio, and at Shaw John 1222. That's S-H-A-W-J-O-H-A-1222. So thank you for tuning in for another episode of Prison Audio with Sean Robert Johnson. That's me. Everybody have a good day. And once again, Chevelle, thank you for this interview. You're welcome, and you have a blessed day. Uh, you too.